Hey guys, in this video, I wanted to answer the question that is the minimalist question. If you could only have one lens for your Sony a6000, in this case, my Sony a6400, what lens would I choose? For me personally, maybe two years ago, it would have been the Sony 35 millimeter F 1.8. That was by far my favorite lens. But over the last year, I have acquired a new favorite and this is it. And many of you will know what this is. This is the Sigma 16 millimeter F 1.4. In this video, I'm gonna to talk to you about why if I could only have one lens, this would be the one that I would have. I've reviewed a lot of lenses on this YouTube channel. And I have to say that after comparing dozens of lenses against one another, including many of the greatest lenses from Sony and Zeiss, I've come to the conclusion that for Sony APS-C, no one comes close to the price and performance ratio that you get with the Sigma DCDN line of lenses, which includes this Sigma 16 millimeter, the 30 millimeter F 1.4 and the 56 millimeter F 1.4, which by the way is what we're using to record this video. Here are a couple of examples of why this is my favorite lens for the Sony APS-C mirrorless lineup. Now, for those of you who are just starting out with Sony and you're just buying a brand new camera, whether that be an A6000, A63, A64, or A6500, you're probably gonna start with the kit lens, the 16 to 50 from Sony. And it's a good starter lens, it's inexpensive, it's $100, and it's a good lens to start getting used to the camera and to take various shots or to vlog with because it's compact, easy to carry around. Once you start using that lens a little more frequently, you'll realize that at least in my case, what I realized was a lot of my shots were at the wide end, at 16 millimeter on that kit lens. This Sigma 16 is a wide angle lens, but it's not an ultra wide angle lens. So don't expect to take interior real estate photography with it, for example. But for portraits, for low light, for everything else, for just general shooting, this is an excellent and a very good all around focal length for everyday use. So in this video, I'm gonna go through the pros and the cons of this Sigma 16 millimeter lens. First, I'm gonna start out with the cons. The first thing is it's a little bit on the heavier side. It's a larger lens. In fact, out of the Sigma Trio, it is the biggest one. So it does weigh a little bit more if you're using it on a gimbal expect that. It also takes up a little bit more space in your bag than some smaller lenses, certainly larger than the kit lens. The second con of this lens is that it has no optical stabilization built into it, unfortunately. Um, in fact, the entire Trio lineup doesn't have any built-in stabilization, so you either have to have an A6500 
or you need to have a gimbal like what I'm using right now to get stable video. For photography, in most cases, your shutter speeds are going to be fast enough to where even if you have somewhat shaky hands, your images will still come out looking relatively sharp with very little effort. The third con of this lens is that it has a very slight, very little focus motor noise that you can hear if you are not plugged into a microphone such as this one that I have. So with a microphone plugged in, I can be recording video right here, right now, and you will not hear any of that small noise. However, if you don't have an external microphone or a lav mic and you're using the built-in microphone on your camera, it might pick up a little bit of that focus motor noise. The fourth con of this lens is that it does exhibit some distortion when it comes to close-up images. I mean, it is a wide-angle lens and it's f1.4. Uh, the vignetting is pretty well controlled, but if you're taking an up-close portrait, it will exaggerate the nose, for example. I would recommend stepping back a little bit and that usually gets rid of that distortion effect and your portraits and group shots look great after that. And the last con, number five, is definitely the price. This is a pricier lens. It's not Zeiss price, but it's not as cheap as a kit lens, for example. This lens comes in at $400, so it is an investment. Uh, it, in most cases, will cost very close to what your A6000 body costs. So think of it as an investment in your APS-C camera. And fortunately, resale value on Sigma lenses on the used market is really, really solid. So let's talk about the pros with this lens. Number one, it has very quick and accurate autofocus. For a non-Sony lens, this is one of the better autofocusing systems out there. And out of the Sigma Trio, the Sigma 16 has the best autofocus as far as accuracy and speed. Number two, this lens is a low light monster. If you are into nighttime photography, low light shots, this thing does f1.4, which is really fast. And in addition to that, if you are shooting during the daytime, if you're doing portraits, at 16 millimeters, you get quite a bit of bokeh. That creamy background bokeh is the third positive of this lens. It really is something special and it's pretty unique to find in a lens at 16 millimeters. The fourth positive of this lens is the excellent colors that you get from it. Sigma lenses are notorious for excellent sharpness and colors and this lens is no exception. They truly are outstanding, especially when you pair it with the A6400 and its new color profile. Reason number five, the build quality on this lens is outstanding. It's made out of high quality metals and plastics and rubbers, but it has stood the test of time. I've been using Sigma lenses for the last three or four years and I have not had a single issue as far as build quality with any single one of them. Reason number six is just the lens sharpness. I've compared this lens to a number of other lenses, including the kit lens, and at 16 millimeters, this thing is much, much sharper than the kit lens. That's what you're paying the extra money for, and that's what you're getting with a prime lens such as this one. So in sharpness, corner sharpness, center sharpness, even wide open at f1.4, this lens does not disappoint. Reason number seven is if you use a gimbal, this is the gimbal lens. The Sigma 16 with its excellent autofocus, low light capabilities, fast aperture. This lens is one of the best that you can put on your camera and on your gimbal for video work. One last thing that I wanna mention about this lens is that over the last couple of months, I've been using this variable ND filter. Now, I've never been a fan of any filters, UV or ND or graduated, whatever it is. Uh, but I really do like this one and I've been using it a lot with this Sigma lens. Now, the reason that a variable ND filter might be a good idea for you is think of an ND filter as kind of like sunglasses, but for your lens. So what it effectively does is it allows you to play with your shutter speed or leave your shutter speed at, for example, one over 50 is what I'm recording video with right now. So if I hit the record button, Right now, the ND filter is on the front of the lens. I can completely make this scene very dark just by rotating it like that. And by doing that, I'm not changing my shutter speed at all. My f-stop is 1.4, my ISO has not changed. I am literally making the scene lighter or darker just by rotating 
this little ND filter on the front of it. For its small price, I would definitely recommend picking up one of these variable ND filters. For video users, if you're shooting outside in direct sunlight, this is almost a must have because otherwise your shutter speeds will go up to one over four thousandth of a second, which no one really wants. Definitely check out this variable ND filter with the Amazon link below. And a special thank you to KNF Concept for sending this filter out to me for review. It's excellent. So that is it for my review of why the Sigma 16 f1.4 is my go-to one and only lens if I could only have one in my collection. Now I'm curious as to what your one and only lens would be if you only had the choice to keep one lens out of your collection. Comment down below, I'm curious to see what you guys would pick as your one and only. Um, thank you guys for watching. Thanks for all your likes, comments, and support. Stay tuned for more and have a nice day. Bye-bye.